Um, it's the only image I haven't Creative Commons. I don't actually know who even invented it or made the image, made the meme. But uh, it's really great, and uh, you know, hopefully they save the receipt. Um, so I'm gonna be talking today about math rock. Math rock is a specific kind of genre uh, within music. Music, um, and I'll be talking about uh, different time signatures uh, within the context of math and stuff like that. So here I have a definition of math rock from Urban Dictionary. A particularly good definition, I feel, um, is that math rock is a genre of music that has almost no trace of folk or blues. It's more of a jazzy, uh, freeform experiment. Um, so uh, example of, uh, taken from the quote here, a guitar riff may repeat a sequence of five quarter notes or four four time signature, thus gives the listener an overall feeling of chaos, in spite of the riff's rigid structure. Um, so math rock is kind of a really weird genre. It has a lot of roots in a lot of different areas. Uh, so it makes it really hard to define um, because it takes from like post-punk bands like Black Flag and the Minutemen, but also has uh, elements from progressive rock from bands like uh, King Crimson and Rush. And then also some elements of math rock also take from uh, indie rock and emo rock bands um, like uh, Cap and Jazz. Um, American Football is also a notable one. Um, so this is kind of a really simple definition. Um, there's um, some modern rock bands. Um, I hope that's legible. Um, so modern rock, math rock bands can include TTNG, just wearing my shirt. Um, I saw them recently and they were great. They had their like 10th anniversary tour for uh, their, their Animals album. Um, and we have other bands like Covet. Um, the woman in the, the background is the lead guitarist of Covet. Uh, Chone, Toe, Giraffes, Giraffes, and a lot more. Um, these are all kind of accessible, poppy flavors of math rock, um, often called uh, pop math rock or math pop rock, I don't know. Uh, none of us nerds really have figured out how to label everything yet. Um, but anyway, um, some older bands like Hella and Don Caballero, um, which I will show later, are a little less accessible and uh, sound very extremely complicated. Um, so keep that in mind. So time signatures. Time signatures um, are certainly something you probably you probably are aware of. Um, it's so common. I, I didn't even have to. Uh, this this picture in the background is not even licensed because it depicts a concept too simple, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'll find, I'm sure corporations will find a way eventually, though. Um, so the radio, most music is in four four time. Um, so. It's presented like kind of like a fraction, not exactly, obviously. It's more of a slash, but it, it, uh, here, but it can, uh, on, the, on the background here, you can see time with uh, two, four, five, four, three, four, five, four, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of wonky. But uh, so it's presented like a fraction on the musical staff, but it's important to know the time signatures are not fractions, should not be treated as such. But it, you know, it's uh, sort of seeing how math can intersect with music in a very basic way. Um, so I will, let's see, I'll give you a rundown of some regular time signatures, and then also some unusual time signatures, but just in, in popular music. So we're gonna, gonna do a few here. And again, hopefully it's not too loud. Is that gonna work? Oh, that's right, I gotta use my own mouse. So here we're gonna have a few examples. I'm gonna do four, four times, three, four, six, eight, seven, eight. And uh, did I, was I supposed to already go over that? Mm -hmm. So four, four times, like one, two, three, four. And three, four would be like one, two, three, and four. And the, the four would be silent uh, in terms of keeping track. And uh, we'll, we'll get more into that later, but uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything that I did not. So we'll go into this. And we're just going to listen to very briefly, just 10 seconds of each. Um, I tried to insert them into the slide themselves, but that was a nightmare. So this is the song, but it didn't actually go to the video, but that's okay, you just need to hear the, the sound. So this is a song by Rage Against Machine called Killing the Name Of. Uh, one of my favorite bands, I just figured I'd use them. So the intro is in 4-4, four, four. most of the songs in 4-4. Four, four. Okay, and 
so we're gonna do, now we're gonna do three, four. These are all pretty popular songs, so they're not math wrong. This one is uh, Piano Man by Billy Joel. Which some of y'all have heard before. Six, eight. Okay, we get a little weirder at this point. Three, four is still kind of, still kind of normal. This is called House of the Rising Sun. It's by the Animals. Four, five, six, one, two, three. Four, five, six, one, two. He says New Orleans really weirdly. Anyway, um, and then finally seven eight, and everyone here should recognize this band. I, I'm not even explaining this. You don't know this band. I don't know what you're doing. So right there, you can split the seven, eight, and that's that's money by Pink Floyd, in case anyone didn't know. Um, and you can split the seven, eight there into uh, a measure of three and a measure of four. So here we have uh, basic math concepts like uh, counting, numbers, fractions, etc. Go to the next slide. So the, the basic thing about math is that the top number tells us the number of beats per bar. So you know, four, four time um, is the is the common time, the usual time. So 6-8 tells us that there are six beats per measure and the eighth note is what gets counted. It's a little, a little weird, confusing, but you know, you get, you get it eventually. Um, so like I said, it incorporates counting, use of numbers, symbolic fractions, etc. cetera. Um, Mac Rock tends to dial this up by 11 um, by having things in wild time signatures like six and eight and three, four, but then switching <coughs> rapidly between them, kind of like a punk rock song um, where you have a very fast paced beat. Uh, and then sometimes even throwing in Weird things, I just made these up on the spot. 11, four, and 16, nine. Just for fun, not to not drive themselves crazy. So we're gonna get some math rock examples. Um, I picked some weird ones, because I'm trying to give the sort of breadth and scope of what we're dealing with here as a genre. So some of it may not be, some of it may be kind of weird to your ears, but that's kind of the point. All right, so this first one is The Fall of Troy, What Sound Does a Mastodon Make? And it's towards the end of it where it goes into six eight. Of course, if you start the song at zero, it's the lead singer screaming his brains out. So you know your mileage may vary about where you start in a particular song. Um, so don't be fooled by that outro. It's actually a very aggressive song, um, at least at points. Um, this next one is 2-4 and 5-4, so it kind of shifts. This is, um, I've already mentioned this band, now, but This Town Needs Guns, which is TPMG. They're probably like the most accessible math rock band you've listened to They're from the UK. They tour um, America sometimes. is 4-4 four, four and 8-8. Eight, eight. What is this one? Uh, oh, this is 40 Rods to the Head by Terra Melios. Um, Terra Melios is a little bit more of a complicated band. This is going to get kind of weird. So it's just a little little bit at the end. The, the whole song's really crazy. They're, they're kind of a more difficult band to get into. Um, and then this next song, I love the title. It's called Fire Back About Your Baby's New Sex by Don Cam or Don Cavalera.
30 seconds. And that switch, that oscillates. Um, we doing okay for time? Yeah. Okay. Um, I meant to put something on YouTube so I could time things out. Um, so what does anybody notice? Does anybody have any very brief thoughts, impressions? This is the activity section. Activity section. Um, does anyone have any uh, thoughts or feelings about the music we've listened to? Um, I want to know, like, I wonder, like, why, not why, but how people get into making that kind of music. Yeah, so, um, a lot of people, so, I mean, first off, it, it, like, any weird sub-genre, it's just a lot of, like, white guys, like, really want to show off how good they are at music, um, and that kind of, like, stems from, like, their progressive roots, uh, their prop rock roots, I mean, I don't mean politically progressive, um, but so, so a lot of it is just like, how can we make this music as weird as possible but still try to make it make sense? And so it's that kind of like challenging yourself I think that people find so addictive and fun. So that's, that's a really good question. Um, so the funny thing about math rock is actually a lot of songs are in 4-4. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, some of them just kind of played weird so it makes you think like, oh, well, this is in a totally different time signature. Um, but it makes us feel, feels different. Um, but there are plenty of instances where math rock bands, as, as I just showed, do play um, something besides 4-4. Um, now we're gonna get into some really weird examples, and I only showed two, because I don't wanna, wanna do too much here. Um, but so we're gonna, we're gonna kinda deviate from math rock for a split second, just to go into more about time signatures and math and counting and all that stuff. So we're gonna look at this pr pr progressive metal band called Dream Theater, uh, and they're pretty cool. Um, I don't listen to them anymore, but they're pretty cool. Um, and this song called The Dance of Eternity is crazy. Um, Mike Portnoy is the drummer. If you can see how many freaking symbols he has on his drums, you can get an idea of how complicated the music he's trying to play is. Uh, he's not trying to play, trust me, he played. Song that's called The Dance of Eternity. There's actually a really cool video on YouTube um, where someone tries to beatbox to that song, and it's really impressive. Honestly, if you're not even, even if you're not into weird time signatures, it's just really impressive. Um, this next one is by Hella, um, which is a California band. Um, their song Biblical Violence, one of my favorites by them. Um, I don't uh, I don't even know what time signature this is. I couldn't tell you. Uh, and it only gets weirder from there. Um, Hell is one of those bands that just like pushes um, pushes music as far as they can take it. Um, so I, I really love them. Um, the drummer right there is Zach Hill from the band uh, Death Grips, which some of us may know. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a really cool song. Um, so anyway, what can you take away from all this? Uh, well, mostly just an excuse for me to, to show off a genre that I really like that no one knows about. Um, but as a, as, a, as a great giant nerd once said, wherever your interests lie, I assure you that there is mathematics to be explored there. After all, mathematics truly is the language of the universe. I don't know who said that, somebody. Um, but, uh, you know, he's right, math is found in most, if not all, the things we do, including, uh, of course, math rock. The genre was called that because uh, critics said that they needed calculators to figure out um, how exactly to make sense of each given song in terms of time signatures and stuff like that. Um, musicians uh, originally saw it as kind of an insult, but it's kind of been embraced over the years. Basically, like most things, nerd and dork and geek used to be seen as insults, but uh, you know, I, I just called Professor Plan a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty sure he knows that I, I, I meant it in an affectionate way. Um, if not, I'm sure he'll fail me. So, um, but anyway, um, so you know, we could go further than than all these examples and stuff like that. Show. Uh, the simple act of counting in math, more general, uh, mathematical structure with music. Um, you know, there are certain 
prog bands um, that make use of, of math more explicitly. Um, and so all this sort of adds up to sort of beautiful or, I don't know, horrifying, depends on your view of math rock at this point. And obviously I've just shown you a very brief sample of a few songs, um, how it makes intricate and complicated music. So just by assigning birds, uh, beats a certain mathematical weight and having numbers represent those beats and how many we count, um, you know, we have sort of some of the most memorable moments of our life. So um, I remember finding math rock years and years ago and, and just loving it because I've always wanted a blending of uh, progressive rock and punk rock. Um, and I really wanted to call it punk progressive, but I guess, I guess people got there before I did. Um, so what are some further things that can be explored? Um, unfortunately, I mean, math rock is still a, I mean, who here, raise your hands if you ever heard of math rock before. Sydney's the coolest. Yes. Cindy's awesome. She, she knows a few, we, we talked about this last week, she knows a few bands. So almost nobody in this room has even heard of the genre, let alone, and you've probably heard a band from, them, uh, from the genre before. But anyway, so the possibilities are pretty big. Most people don't know about uh, math rock as a genre. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody should love it or whatever. It's a difficult genre to get into. Um, but anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been educational for you. Uh, and I hope I haven't been, you know, too all over the place. I, I, Excited about this. Uh, but thank you. That's all I have.